How can you make a hot air balloon? I'm glad you asked. Well, first of all, you'll need a balloon, and that must be made of a very light material. I would suggest that you could start with one of these very light plastic garbage bags. Whenever you're using plastic bags in an experiment, make sure you have an adult supervising and don't let any young children play with them because they can be dangerous, as you know. Next, you'll need a source of hot air. Now, you can either use one of these blower heaters or you can use a hairdryer, and that's what I'm going to use. So you switch that on and it starts forcing hot air up and we're going to put that into the balloon in a moment. Before we do that, I'm going to get the mouth of the balloon ready. To do that, small rubber band over the loose end and then we can open it up and that's the entrance through which we're going to feed the hot air. Now in the case of the real hot air balloons, they use a much more powerful heater than this. In fact, it's a gas heater and it forces extremely hot air through the open mouth of the balloon and into the big nylon bag, which is the balloon itself. In this case, we'll put that up on the maximum temperature and we'll start feeding that hot air into this balloon. There it is, and look at the balloon taking shape. Now in the case of the real ones, they soon take shape. It takes a bit longer than this to fill them, but before too long, the nylon bag starts to open up and form that typical balloon shape. And that one's nearly ready to be launched, and so is this. I know it's full of hot air because the air coming out around my fingers is very hot. So I can remove it from the dryer, turn that off, and I can launch it by simply letting it go. And because the whole thing is lighter than air, less dense than air, it'll rise into the sky, just as the real balloons rise into the sky. They, of course, take people with them, and also they take a heater because that air cools down before very long. And if you didn't have a heater with you, your balloon would come floating down like mine, back down to the earth. Theirs has a heater so they can keep on blasting more hot air and keep it afloat. That one didn't stay up very long because the plastic is fairly heavy. If we use a lighter plastic, such as this plastic in the bag that comes from a dry cleaner, and first of all, tape open that little bit at the top that's normally used for the coat hanger. Just one tiny little square of tape will do it. And on the other end, rubber band around it, same way. Open that up with your fingers and then switch on your source of hot air, the hair dryer, and before long, you'll have that one full of hot air. It takes a little bit longer because it has a larger volume. Once again, leave it there for a minute or so because you want to make sure that it's absolutely full of hot air and all the cold air is pushed out. You'll know that because you'll feel very hot air rushing out past your fingers. All right? Close off the opening, switch that off, and give it a quick countdown. Five, four, three, two, one and away that goes. That rises a little more rapidly than the last one because it's a higher volume. It, there's more hot air in it, and so up it goes to the ceiling. Now, if you want a really rapid riser, get the lightest plastic you can. This is also a bag from a dry cleaner. It's a newer type of plastic, very, very light indeed. I've done the same thing with that. Tiny little square of tape to cover the coat hanger hole and rubber band around the opening. Fingers at the ready, heat source on, we fill it up. Now it's not as large as the last one, but the plastic is far lighter. So the whole thing should be less dense than either of the previous ones. When I feel that hot air rushing out past my fingers, I know that it's full and ready to go. So I switch that off and let it go. And away it goes very rapidly up to the ceiling of the studio. So there's a hot air balloon that you can make at home. I want to know. Is it me?